Well, good morning. Good to be back in the house of the Lord. Thank you for coming today. And uh, all the folks that are here, appreciate you coming. Uh, <clears throat> say to uh, all the folks that will watch uh, on the internet, uh, the front row, thank you for joining in on the front row. And uh, if, you, uh, if you feel like joining us in person, you're welcome to do that. <clears throat> And as always, uh, you know, we have mask if you would like a mask <laughs> um, and uh, all of that. Uh, and if, but if you're not comfortable, we understand that. Uh, I'm going to be in uh, the book of 2 Thessalonians this morning. 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. And uh, you may be uh, wondering about things uh, that have gone you know, on this past week, it seems uh, 2020 has been a rough year. Uh, not only just from the, uh, you know, the pandemic perspective, but it seems like this year uh, there have been more uh, incidents of sickness and uh, people that are afflicted with things and death. Uh, uh, it's just been, uh, uh, you know, it's been a, a, ter a tough year. Uh, and you may wonder in the last few days, you know, what's going on, what's uh, happening with our country and one thing and another. Uh, well, I want to uh, give you a few thoughts this morning <clears throat> on a, a character found in the Word of God that a lot of people are interested in and uh, maybe more so in this day and time that we're living in. And that character is the, the Antichrist, the Antichrist. Uh, I want to... Uh, if you're keeping notes, I'll give you some uh, references uh, that you can uh, uh, refer to. Uh, I want to give you what the Bible says, some prophecies concerning the Antichrist. Uh, you know, you say, well, this is how we identify him. Well, I'm not planning on identifying him. Uh, I plan to be gone before he comes out on the scene. Uh, the Bible said the Lord uh, will descend from heaven with a shout. Amen. And so I'm, I'm looking for the Lord to come. I'm looking for Jesus Christ to step out on the clouds. But before that happens, and you've heard me say this before, before that happens, uh, there has to be some changes. Maybe the changes we've seen in the last couple of days uh, may play into this. I, I don't know. Now, now, don't get me wrong. I'm not a prophet. I'm like Amos, I'm not a prophet, neither the son of a prophet. Uh, I don't know the day of the Lord's coming. He hasn't told me that, hasn't shared that with me. He's not going to. Uh, but the Bible does give us some clues, some uh, things, signs, you want to call them that, that we can look for uh, during that day. And uh, uh, if you go to Matthew 24, a lot of folks look at that and say, well, Matthew 24, uh, uh, you can look at that and see things that are coming. Well, uh, uh, if you look at that, just remember uh, that the, the things that are spoken of in Matthew 24 uh, are happening during, uh, you know, uh, the tribulation period, uh, which is after the rapture. Uh, and uh, actually the, toward the end, Matthew 24 is talking about the end of the tribulation period where the houses will be broken up and the women uh, ravaged and, and so on prior to the coming uh, of the Lord at the Battle of Armageddon. Uh, so you say, what are you saying? Well, I'm saying that uh, if we're seeing things that kind of indicate to us the Lord may be uh, nearing, uh, we got to think Matthew 24 is actually seven years uh, uh, after the rapture. Uh, you know, uh, and so uh, how close are we? How close are we? Uh, uh, and that's kind of what I want to th talk about today, that prophecies concerning the Antichrist. Uh, if you found your place, uh, uh, 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter number 2, uh, page uh, 1271, if you have an old Schofield. While uh, you find that place, please remember uh, the families of folks who have lost uh, their loved ones and uh, pray that God would uh, comfort them in, uh, in their hour of need. Uh, my niece, uh, Stephanie Kiever, uh, remember that family that, uh, and uh, pray that God would have his way. She fought a, uh, a long fight, seven years she fought against uh, breast cancer and, uh, uh, you know, lost that battle, 
but she's gone home to be with the Lord. Amen. She knew the Lord. So I'll see her again. Uh, you keep in mind uh, uh, those services that will be coming up uh, uh, tonight and tomorrow. <clears throat> and uh, now let's look uh, in the Word of God. But first we want to have a word of prayer. Father, thank you for your blessings. Thank you for this day uh, that you have given us, Lord, and for leading us back to be in your house. I pray, uh, Lord, that you would uh, bless every uh, person that's here today. Uh, you know our, all of our hearts, and I pray, Lord, that you would drive back opposing powers of Satan today. Help us to clear our minds and our hearts, uh, Lord, that we might center on your word. I pray, Lord, that you might make it real to our hearts and lives and help us, Lord, that when we leave this place, we would leave better servants than when we came in. I pray, Lord, uh, for those that will view this uh, uh, on the Internet through the front row, I pray that you might uh, touch every heart and may they get a blessing. And, and if there's one that is lost uh, and don't know you as Savior and Lord, I pray that you might speak to their heart that in this hour they might give their heart to you. I pray, Father, that you draw that one as cold and indifferent. Now, lead God and direct us, and we'll give you the praise in Christ's name, and for his sake we pray. Amen. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and uh, let's look at, if you will, verse number 1. Now, we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye soon, or that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. And it really uh, should read, the day of the Lord is at hand, uh, and. The, the day of the Lord, remember, we, we talked about a day of darkness, a day of judgment, a day of thick clouds. Uh, that's what he's talking about. The day of Christ is a day of rewards, a day of uh, the Lord's coming together, his own. Uh, but let me read on. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, that is the day of the Lord, shall not come except there be a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you uh, these things. And now you know what uh, withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth, and that word letteth means to hinder. Uh, and so without doing any damage to the scripture, you could read it. Only he who now hindereth will hinder until he be taken out of the way. He's referring there to the Holy Spirit being the hindering force against the devil. And then shall that wicked, capitalize, shall that wicked, be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Amen. Now, I read more than normally I read, but I want you to see this in context. Then shall that wicked be revealed. There's another name that's used in the preceding verses. He calls him the son of perdition. And the son of perdition is also used, if you will look, I believe the same name is found in John chapter 17 in verse 12. And Jesus uh, uh, there referred to Judas Iscariot as the son of perdition. Now, there may be some that would disagree, uh, but I believe, uh, you know, this person uh, will be the same entity uh, that will come back. The son of perdition, Jesus said that he went to his own place. He had a place 
uh, uh, reserved for him. He went to his own place. Uh, now, uh, that wicked, he's a personality. He is real. He is not a figment of the uh, imagination. Uh, there's few people uh, or characters uh, in the Bible that inspire such curiosity uh, as the one spoken of in these passages. The Bible does not give us uh, uh, details uh, such as his name or his education, his background or the date of his arrival, etc. But it does give us uh, a number of prophecies concerning this man uh, we call the Antichrist. He's also called the man of sin. He's called that wicked. He is called, uh, uh, you know, different names in, uh, in the word of God. But we all uh, uh, tend to refer to him as the Antichrist. Now, the Bible also speaks of the spirit of Antichrist. And in fact, uh, John said the spirit of Antichrist is in the world today. Uh, and what is that? Well, he said the spirit of Antichrist is any, uh, any spirit that denies uh, the Son of God. Any spirit that denies the Son of God, that is his birth, his death, his resurrection, the power of the blood to save, any spirit that denies that is the spirit of Antichrist, but not the Antichrist. He is going to be the epitome, the personification of wickedness, of evil. He is going to be evil in the flesh. Remember when uh, the Bible said that at the Last Supper, Satan entered into the heart of Judas Iscariot and he went out uh, and betrayed the Lord uh, and then met him in the garden and kissed him on the cheek. And Jesus didn't retaliate. Jesus said, friend. Whence comest thou? He knew where he came from. Jesus could have done much. He could have done anything. He could have killed Judas there, but he didn't. He said he addressed him as friend. Whence comest thou? Uh, listen, Judas went out, hanged himself, the Bible said, and went to his own place. I believe that spirit that entered into Judas will, will be the same spirit that will identify uh, and come again uh, uh, in this uh, creature, this uh, uh, man, uh, and it will be a man uh, who will be known as the Antichrist. Now, as I said, before I get into these prophecies, I want to, you know, say, uh, you know, you may be concerned about the last few days and, you know, we have, uh, it, it appears, uh, you know, new uh, 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 folks in power. Remember Daniel uh, chapter 2. Uh, and Daniel in chapter 2 uh, uh, says that God sets up kings and he takes down kings. And with that thought in mind, I was talking, uh, Cindy and I were talking last night at dinner about this. Uh, and I said, you know, uh, we, uh, we were all certainly praying for one outcome, uh, praying that the, uh, uh, the Lord would have his way. And, and we still pray that God will have his way. And let me tell you what, God is still in charge. God is in charge no matter what. But let me give you this uh, thought process, this uh, thing to think about. The Bible says the Antichrist is going to be in charge of the world. He's going to be a worldwide ruler. Right now, this moment, today, uh, uh, the world is not quite ready for a worldwide ruler. Uh, so in order for that to transpire, in order for that to happen, things have to change. What if, uh, and I'm not saying this is what it is because only God knows, but we ought to at least have in our minds, what if uh, part of God's plan is to let some of the things that we've held dear for so long slip uh, so that things change uh, in the way that they have to change uh, before the world comes to its final end? Amen. The world of the Antichrist when he steps out on the scene, will be a world under the power of one man who's under demonic control. The Bible says that he has uh, 
uh, the appearance of a lamb, but he speaks with the voice of a dragon, and we know who the dragon is. Uh, the devil is in behind this. Satan is in behind this, uh, and he is using him, and he will use him uh, until uh, uh, the Antichrist, uh, the beast, uh, and the false prophet are bound and cast into the lake of fire. And then a thousand years after that, Satan will be bound and cast there with them. But he'll be, uh, he'll be held for a while while we celebrate the millennium here on earth. But that's a different message. But listen, uh, this character, and there's, uh, you know, we, we may have to split this, I don't know, into, into two parts. Uh, but anyway, I want to give you a few thoughts. Uh, the world that uh, the Antichrist uh, lives in and rules uh, and controls will be different than the world that we know today. In order to have world domination, and that's been the dream of many leaders. Adolf Hitler dreamed about world domination. Benito Mussolini dreamed about world domination. Alexander the Great dreamed about world domination. And the Antichrist uh, will not only dream about it, but he will accomplish world domination. He will uh, conquer the world. He'll bring the world under his control. Uh, and in order to do that, you have to have uh, some things set up. You have to have uh, uh, the financial system, uh, uh, the governments, everything uh, has to be connected. Uh, and there, uh, I say this, uh, I believe uh, that in order for us to move uh, toward uh, uh, that particular paradigm, I believe the world uh, overall will become uh, a socialist uh, world order, including the United States of America. You say, preach, you think we'll become a socialist nation? I'm afraid I do. Not because I want it. Not because I like it. Now consider who just went into power and consider their leanings and what could happen. This may be something that's tipping the scales to push us more in that direction. I'm not saying it will be, but I'm saying, listen, uh, the stage is being set. There are people in the government today who would like nothing more than to see a new world order. You've already heard it. You've heard it from our presidents. George, w., uh, George Bush, uh, uh, in some of his speeches, said we we're going to have a new world order. Well, that's been under the, uh, under the cover for a long time, but no one was so bold as to say it. But he said it, not only once, but a couple of times. And you hear it more and more. You hear that. Uh, what are they talking about? They're talking about uh, uh, getting everybody together, uh, getting all the nations together, having one economy, having one uh, uh, financial system, having uh, ultimately one leader. Who will this leader be? Well, it's not going to be who they think it's going to be. And it's not going to be everything's lovely kumbaya. Uh, it's going to be uh, hell on earth is what it's going to be. Now, let me give you a few prophecies. One, if you're writing these down, let me, I'll give you the, the scriptures. Zechariah chapter 11 and verse 17 is the first uh, prophecy I want to give you. Woe unto the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock. The sword shall be upon his arm and upon his right eye. His arm shall be clean dried up and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. The Bible says this man that we know as the wicked, that wicked, uh, the Antichrist, the son of perdition, the Bible said that he will have a withered arm, an arm that he will not be able to use. And secondly, the second one is in the same verse. Uh, did you notice uh, the idle shepherd? This is who he's talking about. The idle shepherd that leaveth the flock. The sword will be on his arm and upon his right eye. His arm shall be cleaned right up and his eye, right eye shall be utterly darkened. You've heard me say this uh, many times before. The world is waiting for the coming of the man with the withered arm and the blind right eye. That's going to be one way. Folks, uh, uh, if you listen to this message uh, uh, hints from this time, someday in the future, and you wonder where 
your saved loved ones have gone uh, and they're not here anymore and the world has changed uh, and the world's come under a new leader uh, and uh, it just so happens that he has a withered arm and a blind right eye that I'm going to tell you who he is. Uh, it's the Antichrist. It's that wicked one. It's the man of sin. Uh, and uh, beloved, uh, you better turn to God. Amen. And I'm not trying to use scare tactics to scare anybody, but I'm just saying I believe we're living in an age when the stage is being set. The stage is being set. How long will it take? I don't know. It may take years before the Lord comes and we see all this happen. Things happen uh, in God's time. And, and I, I, I've said this years in the past. I try to catch myself now. You've heard the saying, if the Lord tears is coming. Well, I try not to say that anymore because what I have found out through prayer and reading the Word of God is the Lord will not tarry His coming. So it's a, it's a mistake to use that phrase, if the Lord tarries His coming. He will not tarry. He said, I will not tarry. God has a time schedule. He's got uh, everything on time, and he will come uh, right on time. You can mark it down, write it in your book. The Lord will come right on time. Uh, uh, and so we should say, uh, uh, if the Lord doesn't come before such and such time, but never say if the Lord tarries his coming. He's not going to delay or tarry. So this man's going to, according to the Bible, he'll have a withered arm. He'll have a blind right eye. How would he get that? Well, according to some scriptures that we read uh, later, it seems as if there's going to be war. And evidently he'll be in a war uh, and he'll be wounded. In this battle, and that kind of makes sense. Uh, in fact, the Bible says here in Zechariah 11 that he'll be wounded with the sword, and he'll be wounded in his right eye. So evidently, he's going to be struck in the head. It kind of makes sense that uh, you know, if he's blind in his eye from a wound to the head, that he might have an arm that's unusable because the brain controls uh, the arm. Uh, and, and if I've got my, uh, I'm not a doctor, by the way, not a scientist uh, at all, but I think the right side of the brain controls the left side of the body. So if he's struck here, uh, then evidently uh, his left arm may be the one that's withered. The Bible would say to set his arm and his right eye. But listen, he's going to be wounded. Maybe he will rise from the ranks of the military. I don't know. Uh, thirdly, Daniel chapter 11 and verse 37. I'm trying to keep up with time here. I'm probably going to have to split this message. Uh, Daniel 11, 37, Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor, listen to this, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. Now, boy, it says a lot. He shall neither regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. He's got a withered arm, a blind right eye. What's the Bible tell us? I believe the Bible is telling us that very possibly this man will be a homosexual. Now, there's a couple ways you can read that. He shall not desire, uh, 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 now not regard the desire of women. Some people read that, well, you know, uh, my wife tells me what to do, so I, I'm not going to listen to her anymore, and that's not regarding the desire of women. Well, I don't think that's what he's talking about, you know. Uh, you know, we all, uh, if we all, uh, our husband, all of you men, uh, uh, if we have wives who love us, they're all going to, uh, you know, get on our case sometime. Uh, and uh, mine does it. You know, she told me this morning, uh, "What's your sugar?" And I said, "My my sugar's fine." She said, "You need to you need to check it because your sugar's going to fall." I, I said, "Well, I don't have time. I got uh, I, I got to go, and I'm gonna eat some cereal, or maybe if I have time." No, you need to eat. You know, so she's telling me, uh, and uh, did I regard her? <laughs> no, I didn't, I didn't have time, and, and so uh, I came on. But that's not what he's talking about. I think he's, the, he's talking about the natural desire for women. Amen. 
He's talking about something that uh, normal that God gave us that we were born with uh, uh, is the natural desire uh, of women. Amen. And, and so this man is not going to regard them. Why? Because he wants to magnify himself above all. And so I believe this man, personally, I believe this man will be a homosexual. But we're living in the times for that, right? We are. Number four, Revelation 13, 3, if you're keeping account. And I saw one of the heads as it were wounded. Now, keep in mind the word head, else uh, in the Bible can mean a capital city, it can mean a ruler. Uh, and uh, uh, so listen, as I saw one of the heads as it were wounded unto death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. Remember now, he's got a, he's got what? He's got a blind eye. He's been struck with a sword. Uh, I saw one of the heads as it were wounded unto death. His deadly wound was healed. Remember, the Bible said he will come with signs and wonders and deceivableness. Uh, he is going to have power. Now, the devil, uh, uh, brother, has more power than some people think he does. He is not God. But when God created him, he's a created being. When God uh, made the devil, uh, uh, and, and you could call it, uh, uh, what's the word, uh, uh, Beniha uh, Elohim, uh, the sons of God. The Bible speaks about the sons of God, and that's another message. Uh, but it's only uh, uh, spoken of referring to uh, 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 angels, Beniha Elohim, the sons of God. Satan was one of them. Lucifer was his name at that time. Read Ezekiel. The Bible said he walked in the sides of the north. He walked upon the stones of fire. Uh, he uh, was the great musician. He was in charge of the praise uh, and the worship of God. Uh, he uh, controlled uh, uh, the music. It said he had the pipes and the terabits, all these instruments of music. Uh, God had created him, and he said he was that was perfect in thy ways uh, until iniquity was found in thee. Until, you know, he thought that evil thought, I will ascend to the sides of the north. I'll take over the house of God. And God kicked him out. And it's been war ever since. Well, he's going to lose. Satan is. But listen, this wound, uh, he said one of the heads wounded unto death. His deadly wound was healed. All the world wandered after the beast. Same chapter of Revelation, verse 14, and he deceiveth them, uh, he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Remember, I said Satan has more power than people think he does. He doesn't have the power of life. He can't create life. Only God can do that. But Satan has some tricks up his sleeve. He has power to do certain things. And the Bible said that he's going to uh, use the miracle of calling fire down from heaven in those days. Uh, probably uh, there may be healings that will go on, all kinds of things that will happen. Uh, uh, and here uh, it's going to be a, a healing in this case. Uh, he said he was wounded uh, uh, unto uh, uh, death. And so it didn't say he died. Uh, I don't know how this is going to be accomplished, but maybe it's going to look like he died. Uh, 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 but he's going to be resurrected. He's going to be brought up, and the world is going to gasp, and they're going to see this, and they're going to think this is the most wondrous thing. Uh, and they will think to themselves, who has power to do this except God? And boy, they'll play right into his hand. And then he will say, that's because I am God. Boy, the world is looking for this man. Amen. The world is looking for this man. So he's going to be healed of a fatal wound. Back in the 60s, when John F. Kennedy was president, he went to Dallas in November of uh, that year. Uh, and uh, I remember that. I remember watching TV and seeing that on TV. Uh, and uh, he was shot in the head. And a lot of folks thought at the time that uh, he was going to be the Antichrist because he had a head wound and they said, you know, he'll be raised from the dead and, and he was such a great speaker and they claimed he'd be the Antichrist and all that. Uh, no. And, and we've heard other predictions. You know, we've heard Barack Obama's the Antichrist. Let me tell you, no, he's not. We've heard Joe Biden is the Antichrist. No, he's not. Uh, uh, you know, 
Let me tell you what. Uh, we don't know who the Antichrist is. Is he alive somewhere in the world today? Maybe. Maybe. Depends on how close we are. You know, the stage is being set. Before you have guests over and feed them dinner, you do what? You clean the house, you get everything right, you cook the meal, you set the table, and you get the table all set. It takes time to do that. Then you have your guests in, and they're seated, uh, and you have the meal. Well, listen, uh, it's kind of like, uh, you know, Alice in Wonderland going down the rabbit hole. I have always said, how far down the rabbit hole are we going to go before the Lord comes? Amen. Christians are, especially in America, we're used to thinking that we're good. We've had it this way forever. We're going to have it this way uh, from now on until the Lord comes. Well, let me tell you, things have to change before uh, that wicked can step out on the scene. And we may be in for a rude awakening in America. We may be in for changes that we're not uh, ready for, that we don't want. Uh, uh, you know, we're thinking that, boy, I'm just going to keep going to Walmart, I'm going to Target, and I'm going to keep buying uh, my gas, I'm going to keep working and doing all these things. Well, listen, uh, uh, we've seen clearly this year, all it takes is one little disease that either slips out of the lab or is thrown out. Thrown out, I tend to think. Uh, not of nature, but manufactured by man. You say that's a conspiracy theory. Well, ask the scientists who examined that, and they will tell you that the, the genome in that particular strand of, uh, of virus had some things that clearly identified it as having been man-made. So let me tell you this, and here's something else that's going to sound uh, uh, maybe off the wall to some people. We're being played, folks. This is a drill. This is a test to see how much you will take, to see what you will do, how much you will tolerate, because the next step is coming. What is it? I don't know, but the stage is being set. Now, some folks are going to think I've gone totally off my nut and I'm way out there. Well, think what you want to, uh, but listen, I'm looking for the Lord. What time is it? I'm running out of time. Uh, 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 number six, Daniel chapter 11 and verse 38. But in his estate, he shall honor the God of forces. And a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and precious stones and pleasant things. He shall honor the God of forces. Amen. So this kind of leads me to think that maybe he rose from the ranks of the military uh, because he's, uh, he's got that mindset, uh, a military mindset. And some translate that word as the God of fortresses. There's two ways to look at that. A fortress does what? It, uh, it keeps people out. It also keeps things in. And some people think that the fortresses means that he will be somewhere inside a fortress uh, uh, and that he will honor this God of fortresses. Uh, uh, and some people think, well, maybe it's the God of fortresses in the sense he's keeping people out. And he's very military-minded, militaristic. Uh, I think in order to keep control of the world that he's living in, uh, he's going to have to have control uh, of the military as well as the economy. Uh, and and uh, uh, he's going to bring all these things under his control. Uh, and that will give him uh, 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 the control of man uh, uh, from the physical standpoint. There's another factor, though. In order to really control the world, you not only got, got to control uh, the methodology uh, uh, of man and, and the man himself, the physical man, but you have to control his mind, his spirit, and that will be the job of the false prophet. He will lead them back to the worship of this Antichrist. And so then he will have the triad. You know, if you control the military and you control the, uh, the money, that's two out of three. The third one is the mind, the triad. Control the military, control the money, and then control the mind. Antichrist will control the military and the money. And the false prophet will control the mind and he will direct them all back to the man of sin. That's pretty scary when you think about it. You say, well, the 
the government is so diverse and the money system, monetary system is so diverse uh, that it can't be done. Oh, it can be, and it's headed that direction every day. You know there are people within government, within the banking system today, who would just jump up and down and turn somersaults and cartwheels uh, if we would adopt a, uh, a banking system that was cashless uh, and it was linked worldwide and we didn't have to use uh, uh, nickels, dimes, and quarters, and we didn't have to use uh, dollar bills and all that stuff. And let me tell you what, I think the day's coming. I think the day's coming. I, in fact, I use more and more, you know, particularly now, I shop more and more online, go to Amazon, you know, which makes, uh, you know, Patty's job harder. I give, I'm giving you work to do. I'm keeping you busy, dear. Uh, <laughs> But, you know, she, she's uh, uh, doing all that work. Uh, but listen, not, it's not just me. There are lots and lots of people doing that. And when's the last time you really paid cash for something, you know? In fact, I found myself not even carrying cash much anymore. I think I might have got some. I might have a few pennies in my pocket. And you know what? I picked them up where I, f I found some uh, when I was waiting on my... Uh, a uh, car, my tire to be fixed, had a nail in my tire, and I stood out there and I saw some money on the ground and I picked it up and put it in my pocket or I wouldn't have that, you know. He worships the God of fortresses. He gives this God gold and silver and uh, he says, uh, you know, it's a different God. He's going to change uh, the religion, his religion, to a different one than that of his father's. Daniel eleven thirty seven. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor any of God. He shall magnify himself above all. But in his estate shall he honor the God of forces, and the God of whom his fathers knew not. He shall honor with gold and silver, precious stones, pleasant things. So he's whatever God of his fathers. He's going to turn from that. Now I have some thoughts about, you know, I think that identifies him with a certain people. And, uh, uh, you know, personally, I, uh, you know, I, I believe that this, uh, uh, this person may be of Jewish descent. Um, but I believe he's going to forsake Judaism. And he's going to forsake all that for this God of his, this God of forces. And then, seven, Daniel nine twenty six, and I'm gonna have to uh, quit. I've got uh, other other points. I can't get them all out today, so we'll have a part two if that'll be okay. I don't want to. I don't wanna make you stay here all day. Daniel nine twenty six. If you want, to, if you're taking notes, or if you want to turn there, either way. Uh, and after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come, the prince that shall come, shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with a flood, and, and to the end of the war, desolations are determined. In other words, he's going to lay siege to the city of Jerusalem. Now, we've seen there's been contests over Jerusalem uh, throughout history. That's been the case. It's contested today. You know, the, uh, the Jewish people say this is our land. God promised it to us. The Palestinians say no. This is our land. We were here, uh, you know, and, and all this. And they're, you know, going about all that. Well, let me tell you, there's coming a period after the rapture when this Antichrist, when we'll get to this, he'll confirm a covenant and he will make a false peace that will temporarily settle those questions. And everybody will be happy. How do you do that? Well, we'll, we'll see that too. He's going to 
you know, how to use and make children happy. When you got children that come, let's say, to a birthday party, uh, and they're kind of getting bored, and then they start getting wild, and, you know, and Junior runs over there to Grandma's whatnots and starts pulling out Grandma's uh, whatnots that, that were brought over from, you know, Norway or whatever, and you're afraid he's going to tear them up, and, and uh, you know, Sally's getting into uh, uh, stuff, and, I mean, they're all doing it. What do you do? You get them together, and you start giving them stuff, you know, give them stuff that they have, and that's what he's going to do. He's going to start passing out stuff, and he's going to make a covenant, he's going to make peace and settle this thing, and for a while, they're going to take a deep breath and say, all is well, all is lovely, we've made peace and happiness, they're going to build a new temple in Jerusalem for the Jews, and and uh, i got some thoughts on that that I'll share with you, but when this all comes to an end in the middle of the week, in the, in the middle of the tribulation period, at the three and a half year mark, uh, things are going to change desperately. Oh, he's going to look so nice when he comes. He's going to be so, they'll think he is the greatest thing since sliced bread. He's got it going on. He unified the banking system. He unified the health system. He, uh, we got free health care for all, you know. We got, uh, you know, uh, money, probably a universal income, and, and people don't have to necessarily go. We got all this stuff, you know. Where are they going to get all this money? Well, let me tell you where they're going to get some of it. The people who go out in the rapture, they got 401ks, and they got checking accounts, and banking accounts, and they got houses they live in, and all that stuff. They may not have... A, uh, you know, all the wealth of this world, but you take all the Christians uh, that are the saved people and put them all together uh, and, and the, their mass of wealth and houses uh, and land uh, and, and uh, 401ks and banking accounts and all that kind of stuff, stocks and bonds, it would amount to a lot. What's going to happen? They're going to take that and they're going to redistribute it to people who were left behind. The whiners and the criers and the folks who are too lazy to work and, and all of that, things will change. And, and he'll come on the scene and he'll be saying, you don't have to work anymore. We got all this wealth. We are awash in, in wealth. Uh, enjoy yourself. Have a party. Uh, you know, our enemies are gone and, and all of that. And, and things will be lovely for three and a half years. And then, then, you know, the chickens come home to roost. Well... That's all I can give you today because I'm out of time. Uh, next time we'll talk about uh, the world system of finance and the world system of worship and a world dictator and the desolation of the holy place and, and other things. But today, I hope you got something out of these prophecies of the Antichrist. This will end part one. Thank you for coming today. Let's stand to our feet and... Uh, let me say, uh, for those who are not ready, now is the time. Paul said today is the day of salvation. Now is the time. Before these things break out on the earth, before uh, the Lord comes in the rapture and takes his church out, if you are not ready to meet God, you need to make preparations. I am deadly serious about that. You need to make preparations to know the Lord, to come to Him in the free pardon of sin, and make sure you're ready so when the trumpet sounds, you will go out. If you're not ready, you'll be left behind. And what happens to them? The Bible said God will send strong delusion, and they will believe the lie and be damned. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Brother Andrew, would you dismiss us, please, sir?